Greetings, my BIM friends. I haven't made a video for a while now, uh, and there's something I want to talk about today. There's this project called New BIM that I've been following for a while. In fact, when the Bounty Source campaign started, uh, I was one of the backers. The, the reason why this project is so interesting is because it's a complete refactoring, uh, rework of VIM. Um, and for me personally, VIM is very important because in the past couple of years, I've been completely unable to use anything else. It's just the text editor of my choice. Uh, it's something that I got so used to, I really don't see myself switching to anything else ever. And new Vim is interesting because it's supposed to be a next generation of the Vim editor. Um, so the main features are going to be a redesign of the plugin system uh, to allow for asynchronous plugins, which will be a huge performance boost. Uh, for instance, if, you, if you're someone like, like me uh, who has a very bloated Vim configuration with, with lots of plugins like um, auto completion and, and uh, syntax highlighting and different linters uh, running on your code and, uh, and all kinds of things like if you run tests in the background and compile things and stuff in that event Vim can be really slow so when you trigger an, an event for instance when you save the buffer uh, all these events will trigger and they will run synchronously one by one and your UI will be blocked during that time so if you're on, on a slow computer like a laptop computer this can take like even five ten seconds and um, that would that's a that's a real productivity killer um, but if you can have plugins running in the background asynchronously and and doing all these things um, then then it just works and it and it's awesome uh, another major feature of neo uh, that that looks very promising uh, is the separation of the server and the client in terms of you can have a new Vim server running in the background and then you can have uh, a client that can be anything. It can be uh, an HTML5 application. It can be a full featured IDE, for instance, IntelliJ or Visual Studio, or it can be another text editor like Atom or Sublime Text uh, that, that runs the, the real uh, Vim engine, the new Vim server in the background uh, for, for its text editing and then does its own GUI on top. Uh, and, and this is awesome because quite honestly uh, Vim is quite dated with its, uh, it's, it's a terminal uh, CLI app uh, and, and there are a lot of modern things that you cannot do very well in Vim. For instance, do debugging and set breakpoints and then jump around or, uh, or um, you can see uh, git diffs. Uh, I mean, you, you can have vim diff, but it's kind of ugly. You can, you don't have like a nice GUI tool to help you out, and and lots of other things that that modern IDEs offer that you cannot have with a primitive uh, terminal uh, UI. So um, this is also like one of the top promising features. Uh, and here's an example. Someone wrote uh, a little mini IDE in Rust. Uh, a really interesting programming language from Mozilla and uh, it uses NeoVim uh, as its uh, text editing engine in, in the background which is which is pretty cool and here's also another uh, thing that I've actually tried out myself uh, which is a way to run NeoVim server as an Atom uh, text editor uh, within the Atom text editor and it kind of works but not really it's it's really experimental and this is the thing about NeoVim, it's, it's really early in the development, uh, so it's not stable yet. You, you can't really use it unless your Vim use case is very like minimal. So one of the things that I've tried doing is, uh, really naively, I tried to just dump my Vim RC into NeoVim and see how it handles it. <clears throat> so for example, I have a, a project here uh, of, of one of the Go frameworks, and here is it in classical Vim. So I can just use Control P and jump somewhere and maybe run some plugins. Oops. Oh, why doesn't that one work? Hello. Okay, never mind. 
But, but as you can see, most of my plugins work. I don't know why uh, the tree view doesn't work. Um, and I can jump around. I can. Uh, I can use the auto completion, etc., etc., and it just works. Okay, cool. Now, if I jump into new Vim, uh, naively importing all of my Vim configurations and plugins, it complains a little bit, but it runs, which is awesome. So this is the thing about new Vim: it offers comp com compatibility layer for old plugins, so things should kind of work. But as you will quickly see, Control B kind of works, but then. Uh, my other things don't really work. Oh, nurture kind of works. Things are kind of messy. Uh, if I realign things, and now the, the auto completion doesn't work, etc., etc. So uh, it's it's work in progress. It's definitely interesting. Uh, let me try. Let me try nuking the new Vim RC and now do them. So this is what you get out of the box. This is the stock uh, new Vim. Now I kind of have to do. Oh. oh, so now it kind of shows the. Um, So yeah, th this is just pretty basic Vim, cleaned up, refactored. I'm trying to use my uh, key bindings and they don't work, so I'm terribly useless at, at stock Vim. Um, anyway, this is like a really interesting project and uh, there is still an opportunity for you people out there to back it up. Um, so, so far it raised, uh, what did it raise? Well, it doesn't matter. So, oh, does it say here? So it raised thirty-three thousand dollars so far, and it's been in development for quite a while. So it would be nice uh, for it to receive some more funds. Just throw money at it, um, and and I really hope this this project will be successful. Probably in the next five years or so we should see pretty nice uh, benefits from, from this fundamental part um, in the next generation of Vim and, and its and new usages of Vim that it will enable. So thank you for watching.